congratulations. And uh, I'm very happy to be given time to speak on the Thanksgiving motion. I support it with all my heart. Honorable Madam Deputy Chairman, the President, uh, Honorable President in her speech has said, our heritage connects us to our roots and our development gives us the courage to reach out to the sky. That is why my government has chosen the path of, cons of consolidating heritage and giving priority to development. So heritage and modernity, heritage and development go hand in hand. And it has been proven time and again that civilizational cultures which do not have deep roots, they fall, they crumble. Why our civilization has uh, survived for millennia, perhaps is the, the reason that our roots are very, very deep. And I would like to reiterate them. On the one hand, we are following the path shown by saints like Adi Shankaracharya, Sri Basaveshwar Swami, Thiruvalluvar, Guru Nanak Dev, and so many others. On the other hand, today, India is also becoming a hub of high-tech technology. So again, I would like to reiterate and give some examples how preserving India's glorious past is leading us to the present and then to the future. And this is where the vision of our Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji, is guiding, guiding the nation in every direction. For example, under Modi ji's leadership, it has been decided that five iconic museums of the country will be made of international standards as the central government is working to put the cultural potential of India in a new image in front of the world so that India can become a big center of heritage tourism, which is very, very important. This is the only way not only to preserve, but to showcase and to arouse interest in the world and in the nation and the people to feel pride. And the nation builders in these 75 years, the, 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 the first being Indian Museum in Kolkata, which is perhaps one of the oldest museums in the world. And the five iconic museums will be in different parts of India. Tribute to India's great freedom fighters. So on the one hand, we, ha we have the heritage. On the other hand, we come down to our own times, our own centuries, the past three, four centuries especially, as we celebrate Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav of 75 years of freedom, remembering the freedom fighters, and paying tributes to them, which is so important, very significant, because the nations that forget their warriors, their freedom fighters, the soldiers, and every, every single individual, which helps in not only building the country, the nation, but also protecting. And if we forget them, then that is the biggest crime. Here, we are paying tribute to India's great freedom fighters, in the Azadi Kamrut Mahotsav. And it's very significant how we do it. Mahatma Gandhi's dream, how it is brought to life. While the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi was celebrated globally, led by PM Modi himself, who led the celebrations at the UN, the most special tribute to Gandhiji was perhaps the declaration of the open defecation free defecation-free status for rural India due to Swachh Bharat mission. And I think uh, many of my fellow honorable members have also uh, spoken about it. The first time when he spoke from the Red Fort on 15th August and Swachh Bharat mission and what it meant, people were surprised, they were taken by surprise at how did a prime minister speak about all these things from the ramparts of Red Fort. But that had an all India implication, and today it has carried the message to every corner of India. The Statue of Unity. The forgotten name of Sardar Patel, 
who was a unifier of India. And today, India stands proud and tall because of Sardar Patel's endeavors. I myself uh, have, have uh, some experience of that due to my late grandfather, who brokered the peace between Nizam of Hyderabad and Sardar Patel, who both met at Nagpur, where Nizam signed the document of accession. So it is Sardar Patel who is being paid tribute by erecting the tallest statue in the world, 182 meters tall. Honoring Netaji. Now, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose was duly forgotten, happily forgotten. Kadam kadam badhaye ja, khushi ke geet agaye ja, ye zindagi hai kaum ki to kaum pe lutaye ja. And this is what today Modi ji is taking us on that path, kadam kadam badhaye ja. And with all the painful experiences, khushi ke geet agaye ja, because the one and only message of all his endeavors and his exhortation to his countrymen is that come what may, we have to build a happy India, a unified India, and a karmat India. So, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose has been given his due respect and place on the Kartavya Path, which is the central point of India, India's capital, that's Delhi. And uh, then, respecting and commemorating, remembering freedom fighters, innumerable freedom fighters across India, and for that, a complex of museums is built in the iconic Red Fort. I will just reiterate a few, like uh, uh, the, uh, the Jalian, the Kranti, uh, Kranti Mandir, it's called now, the uh, Red Fort. So the Netaji Museum, Ad Azadi Ke Divane Museum for Unsung Heroes, and Yaad Jalian, and 1857, the first freedom fight war of India. At this point, I would like to say, Madam, that uh, when I was young, like so many of my honorable fellow members here, we had a wonderful film, Jagrati. And uh, in that, the school children were taken on a, on a trip uh, across India. And I remember the song, Jaliya wala baag dekho, yaha chali thi goliya. Ye mat poocho kisne. Uh, and this Jalyanwala Bagh, now the museum is there, and there are four corridors, four galleries, with all the important, significant images, photos, and paintings. So it's again and again good to remind everyone, the new forthcoming generations, successive generations, of the sacrifices made by our ancestors, by so many freedom fighters. The names have been forgotten. And today, it is our prime minister's endeavor to remind everyone of the names where in the history books they are again and again mentioned. Reclaiming our civilizational heritage, madam, there are many places which define a nation and, from, and form the nucleus of its civilization. The way these places are treated, I think it's a very significant sentence, the way these places are treated has a direct impact on the way the nation perceives itself. A nation is made to feel small or big, proud or not proud, by the way perceptions are built. And perception is everything today, Earlier, there were indifferences in the political establishment about taking pride in Indian culture and working now to restore and treasure it. Restating Shri Kashi Vishwanath Dham Yatra Varanasi. The timeless city of Sri Vishwanath ha has always been special for Indians. And uh, irrespective of where they are from, as we saw that the Tamil Sangam, the Tamil and the uh, uh, Kashi residence, that uh, confluence is, is significant. I think it's iconic and is going to happen not only north, south, but also east, west, and from every direction of India. There will be these hubs which are created where everybody comes together in the spiritual energy. 
and uh, the, the Kashi Vishwanath temple complex's expansion and a corridor connecting the holy river Ganga with Sri Vishwanath. The goal of the redevelopment was to protect heritage structures while also providing a visible link between the temple and the ghats where Ma Ganga flows. Once again, I would like to quote Adi Shankaracharya Shlok. Ganga Taranga Kamaniya Jata Kalapam Gauri Nirantara Vibhushita Bhama Bhagam Narayana Priyamananga Madapaharam Varanasi Purapatim Bhaja Vishwanatham. So this is one of those places. Another one is rebuilding Sri Ram Janmabhumi. I think there has been talk about it for now past few decades. Finally, the temple of Sri Ram for which PM Modi led the Bhumi Puja. He led it. We saw the whole uh, video and I think uh, umpteen eyes shed tears of joy, of pride and of gratitude. The temple of Sri Ram for which PM Modi led the Bhumi Puja has been a yearning of millions of people for centuries. It was an emotional moment for millions since many people had wondered if they would ever see Sri Ram in a grand temple instead of a makeshift tent. I can't believe it that I had his, this darshan several times in the tent. And I think that was the only example in the whole world where Sri Ram was <laughs> residing in a tent and now Sri Ram Chandraji gets, Sita Pati Ram Chandraji gets the due place. Somnath Temple Complex, the first of the 12 Jyotirlingams. Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi began various measures to beautify the temple complex during his time as Gujarat's chief minister. In fact, I was very fortunate to participate in the first Somnath festival in 2001. He is the chairman of the Somnath Trust and they're constantly striving to improve the Somnath temple and other temples in the vicinity, like the Bhal Tirtha, where Sri Krishna was resting with his back to the banyan tree, people tree, and the Jara, the Shikari, had shot an arrow in the foot. That Bhal Tirtha, the Swarga Rohan, where Arjun gave Mukhagni to Sri Krishna, etc., these. Kedarna Temple, of course, we've seen PM there, following the widespread devastation caused in, nine, in 2013. The Kedarna Dham is in a flurry of developmental works, and it's, a, it's to improve ease of accessibility. Please, ma'am, time and is over. Amenities. Yes, ma'am, I'm concluding. And then I would like to uh, just mention quickly, remembering our heroes, which did not have a national war memorial or national police memorial, now both have been erected on Kartavya Path, paying due homage and tribute to them. And then I would like to, in the end, say that preserving and protecting ancient Indian history is very, very important. The World Heritage Sites has now included UNESCO, Dholavira, and including 10 other sites from India. 40 other sites are under consideration. So many of our stolen idols from abroad have been brought back and have been duly placed in their own proper place. I think it's very important, madam. Yeah, 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 I will, I will conclude, okay. Don't worry, madam. And in conclusion, <laughs> I would like to say- Ma'am, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are Baba Culture pe koi bolta hai, do minute de dijiye na, madam. Nitya Nutan Chir Puratan. This is our motto. Nitya Nutan Chir Puratan. And when I, I mean, there's so much more, because culture usually gets a short shift in very short time, unfortunately. But it's the culture that gives identity to a nation and to a civilization. So I'm very happy that I got this time. In the end, I will conclude with one line from Dinkar, poet Dinkar. When I see Prime Minister Modi, today was seated here quietly with his hand on his cheek, listening to everything, I'm reminded of his poem on Himalay. Mere Nagapati Mere Vishal Sakara Divya Gaurava Virata Paurusha Ke Poonji Bhuta Jwal Mere Janani Ke Himakirita Mere Bharata Ke Divya Bhar Thank you.